So let me just go ahead. So I was, when I was invited to speak at this seminar, so the first thing I was asking myself was, I mean, what can I actually say or tell you guys that you may not know as much about? Right? So um, games, probably not, because I think most of you are very experienced in that area. Um, so then I decided that I should talk about education and really how to get funded right, uh, in a bit of a sneaky way. And really get accepted by parents and teachers uh, for the youth. So the topic today, education games as learning systems. Right? So first, first off, um, maybe let's clarify what learning systems are. Okay? Now, I was told once by a game developer, um, had a bit of problem selling his games and so on, and said, oh, maybe I should go into serious games, because that looks like an easier way to earn money, and maybe faster way. Right? So, I would like, in a way, just like to clarify and say that learning systems are not easy, right? So first thing, we have to look at a couple of things that goes in the system. Uh, first off, for it to be learning, it has to be structured, right? It, may, it has to comprise lots of different components um, to make the learning comprehensive. Uh, it may comprise of different material, different media, and you need to understand what the outcome is that you're trying to achieve, right? So you need to be able to demonstrate that at the end of playing with the app, using a system, there is a demonstrable improvement or that whoever is using it would have then achieved certain skills or knowledge. And last off, for teachers, especially in schools, um, they have to believe that you have tried it, you have tested it, and that the system of pedagogy training that you're using uh, is something that they trust and believe in, right? So the pedagogy must be there, and I guess you must have trial it to show that it's effective. So just to kick off, um, the, one of the learning systems that we've created uh, was this thing called Ragnar Tales. As you can see from there, it is really a system to help kids manage their anger, right? So emotion management, and it is becoming a problem in Singapore, right? So there's lots of kids because of stress, because they have not enough time to play, too much homework, right? They, they, things build up in them, and they get angry, and it shows in their work, in their behavior. Now, so what we did was that we collaborated with this institution called Institute of Mental Health. Um, for those who are Singaporeans, in Chinese we call it Xia Lang Keng. That means it's the place for mad people, right? So, um, so we don't advertise it here that we're working at IMH because no, nobody wants to think that they're mad, right? Um, but anyway, so they had a very proven series of textbook, workbooks, workshops that they conducted. And we use this as the start for the whole system. And we then basically pull out all the different areas, lesson one to nine, the different ways that you teach the kids how to manage their anger. And of course, we then made that into apps and games, right? So to show you the whole system in there, um, each app had an objective, and together they covered the entire syllabus of teaching the kids anger management, right? And to go further, what we did was that we broke the apps into different segments as well. So the first four apps that you see is about learning, right? So you're teaching the kids all the different techniques, even different terms, how to really identify their feelings and so on. So the first form was for learning. Now, we then wanted to provide them with the tools. Right? If the kid is angry, after learning, right, um, we, they needed some tools and some way to then help them control their anger. So Ragna Toolkit was the tool. Right? So instead of having to go through four apps to figure out how to manage anger, we put everything into one app. So each time the kid is angry, 
he feels there's a need for him to do something, he can call up the app and then, in a way, use the tools in there to cope with the anger. And the last one out there called timeout is something which then helps them to be more proactive, right? So the toolkit and the learning is reactive. You feel angry, you do something. But what we wanted to do was that we wanted them to prevent or stop feeling angry in the first place, right? So the last one called timeout is the last app that does that, right? So each stage, different stages, different app, and the whole thing becomes a system that the teachers can use, that parents can use, and even psychologists can use to help the kids. And of course, I thought about trialing it, doing the study. The pedagogy of what we have done within the app is already tested. Right? They've done it in workshop, uh, and it's proven. Counselors use it, psychologists use it. So one of the key things we looked at was really the game experience. That means from the app we've created, how enjoyable is it? Does, does the kid, will the kid keep on playing it? so that as they play, they will then learn. And of course, um, the results were pretty good. And to round it off, the effectiveness of it. Now, in anger, there's reactive and proactive. Reactive means someone makes you angry, and your anger comes out. Proactive means that you go around trying to provoke people, right? So you, your anger comes out without anyone provoking you. So the apps were designed to help reactive anger, right? And so when we did the whole trial, um, all those are statistics that the psychologists use, but effectively what it says was that after playing the app, the reactive anger of the children was significantly reduced, right? So again, a very positive trial and study that was done. And with that, the whole system is now being adopted by the Singapore Ministry of Education for emotion management training for the entire student population and for children with anger issues by the counsellors, right, to help the, those specific uh, children, right? The key, I guess from what you guys want to know, right, um, funding, right, how do I fund this whole thing? The interesting thing is that the whole development was funded by IMH, okay, because as the institution, they needed to find out, they needed to test and see whether games can be used to treat children. Now, the other interesting thing, of course, is that as an institution, they really have no interest in commercializing the product. So we were able to then license it from them as part of the whole agreement. And so the game is funded by them. We leverage off the expertise of the psychologists, the teachers, and so on, right, to develop the game. And basically, we will commercialize it, and then we will get the commercial revenue out of the whole product itself. Okay. Um, and best of all, the marketing and so on is done by them. So even MOE itself, because IMH is, I guess, a recognized expert in this area, so MOE, the Ministry of Education in Singapore, is then willing to adopt and use this whole system. And with that, then we'll start the marketing to other countries, right, for use in a similar way. Now, beyond that, let me just share with you another learning system that we've created. Hello there, I am Trilla. Welcome to Music Mage and the wonderful world of Nizamia. So what we've always done is that, yes, we will have, of course, to start with one app or two app, right? But the music key is that is you must have the vision of what the entire system should be. Right, so even for Music Mage, what we've done is we've created apps first, done the design, even do a thriller pilot for an animation release. And for information, this animation is done in Philippines. Yeah. Um, we have a team there, right? Um, but really, when everything is put together, it becomes something that we can then present and sell to schools. And in fact, for this particular system, my ambition is really to create my own music schools and use this as a product to run those learning lessons. So you mentioned about trialing. So we have done this with the preschools in Singapore. Play and 
And what we did was that over an eight-week period of time, we did this, we trained the kids, and then at the end of eight weeks, they actually perform for their parents. Right? Because what we did was that we used the xylophone, and they've learned the songs, they've learned how to play, and then they perform at the parents' meeting uh, for their parents itself. Right? Um, and again, I'm not sure whether it applies to other countries, but in Singapore, there is quite a bit of funding for research, development, innovation. Right? So what we did was that once we've done the basics, we approached the design council in Singapore, and they basically gave us a grant to create the hardware itself. Right? So this is what we call the iBell, and that is the music instrument, electronic ins music instrument that then allows us to conduct the music lessons and interact with the games yeah, on the system. And can now be run on more platforms, working with all the games we have created. It now comes nicely packed. Okay, status wise, we're now about ready to launch the system. But I think I'm short of time, so let me just go to the next one. Uh, Call me and hope to see you soon. So, what you've seen is a lot of things, but I understand it's a track for kids and family, right? So, I've introduced. For the last eight years or so, I've been playing with kids. Right? But for the last two years, I've switched to playing with old folks. Okay? And it's fun both ways, whether kids or old folks. Both are just as fun. And the reason why we did that was because as part of what we we're doing in education, we got drawn into the healthcare sector. Right? So Ragnar Tales, as you saw, was really anger management, but it was really a health in a way, a health app as well. So we were invited to then start working with the health industry to then create games for seniors to help them socialize, keep themselves healthy, and basically use games to keep them fit and even, uh, I guess, prevent chronic diseases. Okay, the last one, I bring this up because Last year, sorry, two years ago, I was in a panel and I actually spoke to the people within the panel and I mentioned that in order for us to, in a way, be successful, right, there must always be a platform. So I guess a couple of the speakers before spoke about the platform that they, they've created. Um, so what we've done in the health area, health app, games health app, uh, is to create a platform for developers to then also create games for seniors, but targeted at health, right? So we're, look, we're talking about getting them to eat better, getting them to exercise, getting them to socialize. And for me, this is part of both a for-profit and also a social enterprise, right? Because I see that there's a need. I spoke to someone and I have friends in the Philippines uh, who, I guess you, you guys like sugar a lot, right? Uh, sweet stuff. So diabetes is a major issue in the Philippines. Same in Singapore, right? So, Singapore government takes care of us, but in Philippines, I think the citizens, the people need to do a lot more, right? To then help change the diet habit, make people eat health, more healthily, get them to exercise more, and so on, right? Um, so, we have launched, again, a health portal, the party developers to come in, work with us, create the apps, and then roll it out to the community. Okay, I'll just end it off here. So, these are my contact numbers. Immersive Play is the game development company. Tiger Health is the game health platform company, right? So, for both areas, if you'd like to contact us, speak to us, and see how we can work together, um, those are my contacts. Thank you so much, Sing Bill. Um, I'll kick off a, with a question. I mean, you've been around now for eight years yeah. with Immersive Play. That's right. Uh, so, 
you obviously what I'm hearing is that you know government funding does help a lot. And, it does. Um, but in the time in all your development, where do you think have been some of the key relationships in order to kind of see some of the true some of the success? The the key, both as a person and as a company, um, for me is 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 trust, right? So if you look at what we've done with the hospitals, with the healthcare, with the schools. Um, the reason why people allow us to come into their, their, their school, the reason why the hospitals allow us to come in and test the system is because the, the trust is there. So you can think of building games and maybe make some money short term and so on, because that's how some people do it. You can think of building things and put ex really uh, wonderful claims. Uh, Use this app, your, your, your child will get A's in all their subject, right? But those will work in the short term, right? So you may make some money there, but if you are concerned with really building up your company and your brand, then you need to test it and make sure whatever you claim and what you do is reliable and trustable, right? So you can achieve that claim, all A's and you know, get a scholarship, fine. But if you can't, then please say something that at least not disappoint your customers. Thank you so much, Sengbyu. Right. Thank you. Yeah.